Sarah thought she was in the perfect marriage with her husband David. However, after her mother, Margaret noticed a change in her son-in-law's behavior. Her curiosity uncovered some troubling truths. Margaret stood at the main table at the wedding. She hadn't written a speech or anything. She was simply going to speak from the heart. Her daughter Sarah was getting married to David, and everything in the world seemed perfect. Her heart melted as she looked at her daughter smiling from ear to ear as she held her new husband's hand lovingly. After all the years she had spent raising Sarah, she was now grown up and married to the man of her dreams. You know my late husband and I had always hoped for a son, but we never got one. Sarah was our only child, our little miracle, and now, through our precious miracle, I have a son in David. God has truly been good to our family. David, please look after our miracle and continue to be the miracle we believe you to be. Salud, Margaret concluded, raising a glass for a toast. Earrings? No, I haven't received anything from David. It must have been old, Sarah replied after Margaret asked about the earrings. Months passed and the newlyweds seemed on track to a beautiful and promising future. However, Margaret began to notice a change in her son-in-law. David had become distant and distracted. She had even caught him out in a couple lies. David started working late often, but when Margaret would ask him about his whereabouts, sometimes his story didn't correlate with what he had told his daughter. To Sarah, he would say he was out for dinner with a client. Meanwhile, with Margaret, he would explain that he had to stay over at the office later than usual. Upon confirming the opposing stories, her daughter Margaret grew very suspicious. She tried not to give it too much thought. After all, it was her daughter's marriage, and Margaret could never fully understand the dynamics of their relationship. However, Margaret got to see David often, with their family being as close-knit as they were. Her motherly intuition told her something was amiss. One day, Margaret came over to Sarah's house to help with chores as she often did. Sarah and David both had full-time jobs, so Margaret would help out at the house on occasion. Once, while searching through David's pants before doing laundry, she found a receipt for expensive earrings. Oh, wow! My daughter is really one special woman. Well done, David, Margaret said to herself. Margaret expected her daughter to tell her when Sarah finally gave her the earrings. She was dying to see how they looked after seeing how expensive they were. She and her daughter lived for these sorts of conversations. Earrings? No, I haven't received anything from David. It must have been old, Sarah replied after Margaret asked about the earrings. It had been a while since she did the laundry, and she would have thought that David would have given her the earrings by now. Margaret simply told herself David must be saving them for a special occasion and left things at that. However, Margaret's suspicions hit a climax when after doing David's laundry again, Margaret came across a woman's perfume on one of his shirts. She did not hesitate to inform her daughter. I don't want to make you paranoid, Sarah. I just want you to be careful. I'm worried about David, Margaret said. David isn't cheating on me, Mom, Sarah retorted. I never said that, Margaret replied. But you insinuated it. I don't want to talk about this anymore, Sarah concluded. Adhering to her daughter's wishes, Margaret let it go. However, a while later, Margaret went on vacation to another city. As she sat in a cafe, drinking her coffee and reading a book, she saw something she was never prepared for. She saw David walk by with a young woman near her. Margaret instantly felt a knot form in her stomach and began to follow them. Margaret followed David and the young woman to a luxury hotel, the very same hotel Margaret was staying at. She watched as they entered together, the knot in her stomach tightening further. Margaret hesitated outside the hotel, wondering if she should go in and confront them or not. She decided to go in and see what is going on. Margaret went in to see David and the young woman sitting at a table in the hotel restaurant, laughing and chatting merrily. She felt sick to her stomach but forced herself to approach them. David, who's this? Because I know for a fact that it's not my daughter, your wife! Margaret barked without remorse. 
Margaret, what are you doing here? David asked, confused. I should be asking you that, Margaret retorted, raising an eyebrow in suspicion. I think there's been a little confusion here. Margaret, this is my work colleague, Emily, David said, keeping his cool as he gestured toward the woman. Emily, this is my mother-in-law, Margaret, David concluded. Margaret felt so embarrassed. Your colleague? Margaret repeated. Yes, she's my secretary. She's been my right-hand woman as we've been participating in the local business summit in the city, David added. Margaret felt terribly embarrassed for jumping to conclusions and apologized to them both. She left them for their meal and went to her room. She even called Sarah and told her everything that had happened, apologizing to her daughter for putting a strain on her marriage. I understand, Mom. It's easy to jump to conclusions when it comes to the people we love. Everything you do is from a good place. See, you just have to be a little more trusting, not just of David, but my own capability within my marriage, Sarah concluded. You clearly don't know who you're trying. I'll ruin you. But later that evening, Margaret went down to the lobby to go to dinner when she saw David and Emily together again at the hotel lobby. This time, however, she noticed that Emily seemed nervous and uncomfortable around David. Margaret approached discreetly, keeping a low profile. No, we will not be staying another night. We are changing hotels. Now please cancel our booking. Our taxi is almost here. A frustrated David snapped. Margaret found this very suspicious. She decided she'll investigate a little further and follow them. Something was going on between these two, and Margaret, now more than ever, was determined to get to the bottom of it. Margaret followed David and Emily's taxi until it finally stopped at a traffic light. Margaret's taxi stopped beside it. The windows were open so Margaret could hear every word from the car. You don't have to worry about my wife. But I promise you, Emily, if you decide to break up with me, you're fired. Out of a job, you hear me? You clearly don't know who you are trying. I'll ruin you and you'll never be hired again, David barked. Margaret couldn't believe what she was hearing. In fact, she had heard enough. She lowered her window. The car continued, with Margaret still following behind. It finally stopped outside a hotel. Emily continued to cry in the car. Meanwhile, the taxi drivers got the suitcase out of the trunk as David called the porter and asked to bring things to the hotel. But suddenly David heard a familiar voice behind him. Let me help you, son. David turned around and saw his mother-in-law looking him straight in the eyes. You and I need to talk, Margaret said calmly. Margaret demanded he let Emily go about her way. Like her daughter, Sarah, Emily was a victim of David's manipulative tendencies. David tried to lie his way out of the situation, but Emily came forth with the truth. David stuck his story, insisting Emily was to blame. Listen, it's not how it seems. Emily is a liar. Please don't tell Sarah. It will ruin everything we have worked too hard to build, David pleaded. However, Margaret's mind was set. She left with Emily, hoping to learn more about her and David's relationship. As Margaret and Emily walked off, Emily began to have a panic attack. She'd sat on the sidewalk in tears as Margaret tried to calm her down. Breathe, breathe, Emily, Margaret encouraged the young woman, holding her hand. Emily finally calmed down. I'm sorry, ma'am, I just don't want to lose my job. I've wanted to leave him for a while, but he would always threaten me, saying I'd be jobless if I left. I didn't know he was married. I immediately tried to leave him when I found out, but he wouldn't let me. Please, you have to believe me. My parents got divorced because of my father's mistress. I would never put any family through that, Emily explained. It's okay, Emily, I believe you, Margaret said. Margaret called her daughter Sarah and told her everything that happened on the trip. Sarah was shocked and heartbroken to hear about David's abusive behavior. She wept bitterly as Margaret put Emily on the phone. It's true, Sarah. I'm so sorry. I never intended for any of this, Emily confessed. A few days later, Margaret met with her daughter and comforted her about the whole saga. Sarah backtracked, going into denial about the whole thing. And why should I believe you or that woman? You've never supported my relationship with all your suspicions. Sarah said in tears, Oh my love, you know that's not true. I was the happiest for you and David, but he made his choices. My role as your mother is to look out for you, and that's all I'm trying to do. That young woman, Emily, is just another victim in all this. Margaret explained, pulling Sarah in for a hug. Sarah resisted at first, but finally gave in, crying on her mother's shoulder. Sarah went back home, 
finally ready to confront her husband. David came back home that day to find his bags packed and waiting for him in the lounge. Sarah sat calmly awaiting his arrival on the dinner table, David's luggage placed in front of her. And then? What's this? David asked, confused. It's the last straw, David. I know about Emily. My lawyer's already sorting out the divorce papers. She'll be in contact with you. Congratulations. You're now free to do whatever you want. I want you gone by the time I get back. Sarah said nonchalantly as she exited the door. Sarah, please, I can explain. She's lying. You can't trust her. David cried as she walked out. Margaret was there to support Sarah through every step of the divorce. It wasn't easy, but she made it through with Margaret's support. As time progressed, Emily and Sarah actually became friends. In fact, they were so close they became like sisters. One day as Sarah was leaving a cafe, she was surprised to see David sweeping the street. David? She said in shock. Sarah? David responded embarrassed. Weird seeing you here. I hope all is well, Sarah said casually. No, nothing's okay, Sarah. I lost my job because of that woman, Emily. She seduced me and framed me, Sarah. You must believe me. I'm sorry for everything, but you have no idea what kind of person she is, David explained, lying through his teeth. Suddenly, Emily walked out of the cafe. Sorry, I just needed to use the toilet quickly, Emily said to Sarah as she looked up to see her with David. David was completely dumbfounded. No worries. I was just catching up with David here. He was trying to lie to me again, as if I didn't know about the sexual harassment case that cost him his job after you reported him blackmailing you to HR, Sarah explained. Oh, what a shame, Emily added. Once again, you're completely wrong, David. I know perfectly well what kind of person she is. Just I've come to realize what kind of person you are. Goodbye, David, Sarah retorted before leaving with Emily. David was lost for words as he watched the two women walk off together. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell for more exciting stories that will change your life.